Hi everyone, Jennifer Penton here again. I'm just going to review for the quiz with you. Uh, the first thing I want to I want you to remember is that <clears throat> the keyboard shortcut for transforming an image or making it larger or smaller is if we go edit free transform command T, right? So you want to hit command and you see the command light up T right now I have a banana here which I'm going to make into the mouth and I'm just going to go ahead and remember I can make things bigger by holding down option on a Mac or alt on a PC and then transforming it from the center I can make bigger or smaller and I can do a lot of other things right I can just bring this tool over here and rotate my banana mouth I'm going to even transform it more option, make it smaller. Okay. I can also right click or control click. And then I have all kinds of options. I can flip horizontal, flip vertical, make it frown, rotate different ways, distort it, change the perspective, warp it as one of you did with that really cute um, um, hat made out of a watermelon. So you can do all kinds of things with free transform command T. And when you're done, you just hit return. Okay. Now, um, if I want to change the color of this banana, we can hardly see it. As you can see, I can go image adjustments, hue saturation. There are other ways to transform, change the color, but this is a nice, fun, easy one. And all I have to do is now just drag the hue slider to change it maybe to a red. That's pretty cute. So I'm going to stick with that and maybe saturate it a little bit more. Should I make it lighter? Hmm, darker maybe. So there you go. Actually, I like it darker. That's good. And even make it a little bit more, maybe less saturated. Kind of tie into the hair a little bit. Give it more of a brownish red feel. And then click on OK. So that's how to change the color of any layer. Notice that I'm in the banana layer. Okay, um, a selection. What is a selection called in Photoshop? So if I wanted to make any kind of selection, I'm just gonna just kind of make a selection just for the heck of it right here. I can be on any layer. Um, a selection is called marching ants and you can see why, right? The marching ants look like little ants marching along and you cannot paint outside of a selection. So let's say I make a new layer and I just wanted to paint on that layer, right? So if I paint here, and make my brush larger using the right bracket, okay? And you'll see it getting bigger here when I make it larger, okay? I can't paint outside of a selection, okay? So keep that in mind. And remember, this is layer five. To, un to get rid of the marching ants, I go to select, deselect. Okay, let's learn a little bit more here. Um, so that's the selection. And um, we learned a lot of selection tools in some of the other exercises. As you know, um, the magic wand is really good for um, searching sections by color, by selecting things by color, for selecting things by color, I should say. The quick selection tool is great for just grabbing sections of things, especially like hair, to get started with a selection. The object selection tool was the first one you used if you have a new enough version of Photoshop where you just draw a square around something you want and you can select it. Then we also have the lasso tool, which uh, I just used to make this freeform selection and other tools within that tool. And then we have the marquee tools and they can make very simple selections like squares, rectangles, ellipses, circles, lines, things like that. Okay, so those are some of the very important selection tools. There's also another one you could argue that the pen tool can create selections, but most of the selection tools I just covered right now. Okay, so keep that in mind. So those are just some of the many selection tools. Um, Okay, if you want to refine a selection, especially like when working with hair, if you may recall, as long as you're in a selection tool, you have to have one highlighted, you will see select and mask here. 
Okay, so um, keeping in mind if we were in this right here, quick selection tool, you also see select subject in this newest version of Photoshop, which is great because it will select a person for you. But select and mask is great. So let's say I am in, um, let's say I have her open again. I'm going to drag her to the top, my, my person that I grabbed from the internet with this great hair, right? And I want to select her hair. So maybe, or actually, if I have an older version of Photoshop, you know, I would select her hair as well as I could using the, uh, the quick selection or the select, um, sorry, quick selection or this really great object selection, which is from 2020. And then I could go into select and mask. But if I have a newer version of Photoshop, I do select subject first, click on OK, and it's going to do a great job of selecting her, including her hair. Then I go into select and mask and I play with all the sliders. Um, and I can even refine the hair in 2021. Older versions I can't, but I can do a lot, like once again, using edge detective, detection and output settings, decontaminate, decontaminate colors. And of course I can go in and use the lasso tool to clean things up in here. Before I select, I might want to use the magic wand to get rid of things like the white areas here. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to output to generally a new layer. Now, sometimes we use masks. Masks are great. They're especially great for magazines and things like that. But for now, like if you're working, you know, in a professional environment, oftentimes you're using layer masks. But for now, we're just you doing new layer. I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, go ahead and just do it just so you can see that I've got a pretty good selection from her. I'm going to close that and let's continue reviewing for the quiz. Okay. Um, to increase the size of any brush. So let's go to the brush here. Remember if you want to increase the size of a brush and let's go to a layer where we're, we can actually work on something. Um, okay, so right bracket makes the brush bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. Remember shift right bracket will make it firmer. Shift left bracket will make it softer and you can see it changing up here, okay. So once again, shift right brackets, making it a firmer edge, shift left bracket, a softer edge. Okay, let's move on. I'm trying to keep this quick so that we can not have too large of a video here. <clears throat> okay, um, the contents of a layer in on a Mac. Okay, so let's say <clears throat> that I have this broccoli, which I haven't worked with yet. And I want to just um, select, select the broccoli, right? Let's say I want to select the broccoli. So I put my little cursor in the layer thumbnail and I command click. On a Mac, it's command click. On a PC, it would be um, control click. So maybe I wanted to select this broccoli because maybe I wanted to add like a, a, a shadow around the, make it darker around the edges, you know? That's why I might want to select the broccoli. Once again, if I want to deselect, Command D. And of course, I can go ahead and Command T, make it smaller. Okay, and then rotate it. And I can do this also by using some of those other tools that I have within this tool. And there you go. And now I have a broccoli nose, hit return. Okay, so there you go. Uh, let's keep going here. Um, okay, to make a layer transparent, remember this line drawing here? Let's go ahead and save. Save Command S is important. Remember, if you're working on a computer, Photoshop's not going to save for you automatically. So you could lose hours of work if you don't save often by hitting Command S. Okay, going into the cat drawing, um, as you may recall, we always want to make a line drawing, put it on the top of all of our layers, and then we're going to paint under the line drawing. But the important thing is we want to make sure that the blend mode, which is right here, of that line drawing is not normal, because if it's normal, we're not going to see anything under the line drawing. We're going to put the blend mode, we're going to set it to multiply, 
so it's transparent and then we see all these wonderful layers underneath with all their nice colors okay um, let's see keyboard shortcut for undo is command Z right so we can always hit command Z let's say I accidentally dumped some paint into the cat's face using the paint bucket but I'm on the wrong layer okay so if I want to undo that I hit command Z okay um, but let's say I want to redo it shift command Z but let's say I want to go back a few steps beforehand okay I can go into the history right here okay this is my history and I could go all the way to the beginning of where I opened that file. Or if I wanted to play around with the blending changes, this is a way to go back several steps very quickly. And you can normally go back about 32 steps, but you can change the configuration to be more than that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I already answered that question. Let's see. Uh, let's continue here. Um, okay, so I answered that one. How can we fill a selection with color? Okay, so there are different ways you can fill a selection with color. Um, and some of those ways are you can use the paint bucket, right? If you want to fill a selection with color as we, as we saw before. Um, let's say I select this area. So let's go ahead and I'll do this very quickly using the magic wand. Select this area here. Make sure I'm on the right layer to select a, an area. Command D if I don't want that. Okay, so let's say I just want to select this area and fill it with a color. Now I'm not going to do the best job because I'm not going to do expand, modify it. Well, let me do it. What the heck? Select and I'm going to go ahead and modify. Expand two pixels is good. Let's just say We'll do that. I'll make a new layer by hitting the plus here and we'll call this cat's face. Okay. And now I can either use the paint bucket, right? Um, which is right here and fill it with whatever color I want. Command Z that, or I can hit option delete. I'll command Z that, or one thing I didn't show you before, I can go edit fill. Now with Edit Fill, I can choose from the color picker by going foreground color. Foreground color is, the, is that top purplish color. Background color is the black color in the color picker down here. Or I could choose any color I want. <coughs> Excuse me. So I could go to color and pick any color at all that I want. Let's say I want this color. Click on OK. And now go OK. And there it is. So that's another way. <clears throat> so let's see, I can go edit fill, use the paint bucket. Um, I can do option delete. And there are a few other ways. Um, and I think I showed you some of those others before. Let's see, paint bucket, option delete. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Um, so there are many ways, hint, hint, that you can fill a selection with color. Okay. And I'm going to undo that. Let's just go back. Okay. And let's go ahead and fill that with this color here. Um, so edit fill. Boom. And I'm going to go ahead and use the foreground color, which is that purplish color. And there we have it. Command D to get rid of the, um, uh, the selection, the marching ants. Okay. Let's take a look at some other things here. Um, Okay, remember, if we want to warp or bloat something, a really great tool is the, um, the, the liquify tool, which is really fun. So going back here, um, if I go to I left, let's go ahead and go to I left. And let's say I want to, I'm going to go to the move tool because that's my basic tool here. I'm going to go ahead and go to filter liquify and remember it's the layer that I've chosen and I can do all kinds of crazy things with it I could do this if I wanted to command Z let me command Z that let's bring it over let's see um, 
trying to think of what I could do here. Maybe just like that and like that. Okay, so let me show you. There you go. It's a crazy eye now. Command Z that. I'll go back into the liquify tool. Remember, don't go to this one. Go to the dot, 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 liquify, dot, dot, dot one. And I can bloat this. Okay, so let's make this um, tool bigger by hitting the right bracket. And watch this. I can make this eye a lot bigger. Make it bigger like that. Okay, click on OK. Isn't that crazy? Or I could pucker it. You know, I could go back in, I can make it smaller. So there are all kinds of fun things you can do. Liquify is a really fun tool. Okay, let's see. Um, now, layer styles. Okay, we didn't talk about layer styles yet, um, but one cool, really neat thing you can do with layer styles, and this is really great for text, um, is that you could, let's, let's take this, um, this mouth that we made. I haven't even played with the carob yet, but um, let's go ahead and get the banana. And if I right click on the right side, right here, I was just clicking right here. I'm going to cancel and do this again because I know that was fast. Click right over here. Just double click in that area. I get what are called layer styles. They're great for text. They're great for non text layers as well. And one thing I can do here, let me just move this over. Well, I'll just leave it right here. Is I could add things like drop shadows. Okay, so if, let's say I add a drop shadow. Now you'll notice that there's a little drop shadow for that banana. Okay, and when I go into the drop shadow here, so I've selected it, I can change my distance and spread. So I'm just going to bring this down so you can see this better. I can make it more of a drop shadow. I can change the angle like that. Okay, I can make it a bigger drop shadow, a softer drop shadow, lots of things I can do. I can also add a bevel and embossing to the banana. And if I click onto bevel and emboss, I can make it a softer embossing. So now it's starting to look like it's coming off of the, um, the page there, kind of giving it an interesting look, okay. As you can see, I'm instead of inner bevel, maybe I can make it pillow emboss. So it's a softer look. And I can just really play with that and do all kinds of cool things to it. Um, and there are other many other tools in here. So the so um, you can make shadows and highlights um, and all kinds of things with layer styles. So um, and you'll notice when you have layer styles, if I click on OK, you see them below the layer. And if you want, you can turn them off by just clicking on the eyeball next to effect and effects. And now the layer styles are gone, but they're still there if I want to just turn them right back on. So that's kind of a nice thing. Um, remember when you're printing, going back to our line drawing, if this is going to be printed on paper, you always want to make sure by going to image, image size, that it's set up to be a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. If it's not going to be printed, generally it's going to be 72 pixels per inch. But remember, for printing, 300 pixels per inch. Um, that will make a very nice, crisp, uh, good-looking print. All right, moving right along. Let's try go to the next one here. Let's see. Remember that the more pixels you have in an image, going back to image size, the higher the resolution. So this one has 200. Uh, 2048 pixels by 2560 pixels. It's going to print very nicely at six and a, uh, almost seven by almost nine inches. Um, if you wanted it to print better and be a larger image, then you'd have to make sure that it was a higher pixel image. Okay, if it's very few pixels, it's going to be a very, very bad print. Won't look good at all. Okay, um, okay, remember the zoom tool. If you want to zoom in, let's say I want to zoom into an area, I just click here or I can just press Z for zoom. Um, so if I just go ahead and press Z, I get the zoom tool. And let's say I want to zoom into this area. Look at this. As long as I hold my zoom tool right in there, that works. So that's kind of nice. Another way to zoom is command minus to zoom out or 
on a PC control minus or command plus to zoom in. But the benefit of the zoom tool is of course that wherever you are, you can zoom into that section, which is really helpful. Okay, to delete a layer, I've been waiting to do this. Let's go to back to the potato head. Here's a new layer that I made just to show you how to paint within air sections. I never actually named this layer. And if I want to delete it and just get rid of it because I know I never am going to want it, all I have to do is drag it into the trash can. It's that easy. And I'm done. Make sure you Command S, save often. Okay. Um, and remember, if you want to duplicate a layer, let's say for, for whatever reason I wanted another eye, right? Like a third eye. Okay, so if I did something like that, I would just take this eye right, drag it into the plus sign to create a new layer. Now I have an eye right copy. And if I hit V to get back to the move tool, I can move that, whoop, Command Z, uh, I right copy, make sure you're in the right layer. And now I can move it up here. So now I have three eyes. And once again, if I don't want it, back, bring it back into the trash can and it's gone. Command save. Okay. Um, to, do, 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 to copy layer. Okay, remember the hexadecimal codes. Okay, I'm going to just switch this back to being white and black. And the easiest way to do that is to hit D as in dog, which is gives me the default colors, black and white. And I can always hit X to switch their order or just click on these little arrows here. And remember white is FFF, FFF, and black, let's just cancel, and black is 000000. And any color in between or you know any other color will have a very specific hexadecimal code, which is great for collaborating with people so you know exactly what color you want when you're dealing with working on Photoshop projects. All right, so that's that. Let's just see, we have one, I think we have one other, yeah, one other page here. Okay, I'm just looking at my notes. Um, okay, we did how to change colors. We did hexadecimal, Photoshop, works best. Oh, now here's a good one. Remember, Photoshop works best when your computer is empty. You don't want your hard drive. If I go over here to the finder, I want to make sure my hard drive, if I go here to my hard drive and hit Command I to look at information, I want to make sure it's not too full. Right now my hard drive's a little full. I should probably get rid of some of the stuff that's in here. Okay, less than 75% full is ideal. Also, remember, if you want to um, make Photoshop work better, you can close Photoshop and um, you can trash your preferences, which is a very helpful thing to do if Photoshop's not running well. Um, and let's see. And um, I provided the way to do that. You can also just Google fat trash Photoshop preferences and it'll show you exactly what to hold down while you are restarting Photoshop and then it will ask you if you want to trash them and you will say yes. Um, okay, that's a good review for you. I know I went a little fast. I'm just trying to keep the file size down, but um, you know, stop me and start me and just review this a few times before you take the quiz and just do some practicing and you should be fine. All right, have a great uh, day or evening and I'll talk to you guys soon.